All right, folks, happy Friday. You are joining us. Thanks for joining us for our final in our series for Women's History Month uh, this week on the channel. Uh, I'm Mandy Walls, DevOps Advocate here at PagerDuty. If this is your first time visiting our channel, please follow us. We'd love to know that you're out there. If you'd like to chat with us or you have questions or comments during the panel, you can join us on Twitch for that. If you are watching on Twitter, um, if you want to like that tweet so we know you're out there, we won't be able to see your comments from that side. So if you want to comment with us, uh, please join us on uh, on uh, Twitch. That'd be great. So with me today are some fabulous ladies from our product team and our product marketing team, and we're gonna we're just gonna get into it. So uh, I'll start at the top and we'll work our way around. Vivian, tell us a bit about what you do at PagerDuty and how you got here. Yeah. Nice to meet everyone. My name is Vivian Chan. I'm a director of product marketing here at PagerDuty. Um, it's funny, like when I interviewed at PagerDuty, I mean, one of the standard questions was like, what's your familiarity with the product? And my husband's an engineer and I, I mean, I was completely honest. It was like, well, you wake me up in the middle of the night every once in a while, Cody's on call. Um, but I made my way over here after like, my whole career has been in B2B tech marketing. And so I've kind of bounced around all different functions and always end up landing back in PMM. I have happened here as well. I joined about a year and a half ago doing solutions. And then um, after getting my feet wet, we I landed over on the product marketing side. And roughly what I do, I actually work directly with Julia, who's also on the call. And so um, I'm working on kind of like bringing our products under the incident response and AI ops groups to market and trying to take into consideration how to, you know, like communicate that to our internal and external audiences. Awesome. So Julia, tell us about your side of that story. Yeah. So thanks, Mandy. Um, great to meet all of you. My name is Julia Nasser. I'm a product manager here under our AOPS group. Like Vivian said, I actually work quite a bit with Vivian. I worked a bit with Maya as well. Um, and the way I got to PagerDuty is a recruiter reached out to me and it was really um, I had actually heard of Pager Duty because we actually, um, you know, I evaluated it at a previous company and just it really, the opportunity, everything about the company sounded so cool. And uh, I'm just, the rest is history. Now I'm here one year in. So it's been a, it's been a great journey. Awesome. And Maya? Hey, yeah, I'm Maya and I'm a product manager for the integrations at Pager Duty. So I do, um, chat ops, um, ticketing ops, and work with, um, you know, just connecting various monitoring tools as well at PagerDuty. And uh, I've been here about two and a half years, and I'm also based in Atlanta. So I'm holding the PM product org down for the Atlanta office. <laughs> uh, but what brought me here was I've, I've worked in many different industries. And um, so I've done sports and live entertainment, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I've done healthcare, but I had never worked in just like purely DevOps. So um, that's what really piqued my interest. And I'm glad that I was able to get through the interview process and how now I'm here. Awesome. That's fantastic. It's, it's nice to know that folks like, Patriot is like weird. It's like a melting pot almost. Like there's a lot of folks here who have come from a lot of different industries, a lot of different places. Like it's not necessarily, oh, we only hire folks who've worked in DevOps before. There's a lot of of uh, really innovative people from from around different industries there. So, um, well, let's talk a bit about the the things that you do, like your day to day, and what do you sort of find most interesting about the job that you have here at PageDuty? Um, we'll go in the opposite direction, Maya. Well, why don't we start with you this time uh, and tell us about what you find interesting about your job here? Yeah. So um, I think PageDuty is the largest company I've worked at, and the one thing that I really love is the um, different groups of people that I get to work with all across the world and um, being able to work with um, our integration partners and like build relationships and have those opportunities to um, just work with really big companies all across the world, um, I think is like my favorite part of working at PagerDuty. From a product management standpoint, I think um, my favorite part is, so I originally started off in like development. And I realized I was not a great developer and not because I didn't do my job. I just realized that it wasn't for me. And I think I was better at like organization and product and business planning. And so um, giving, allowing me to be like technical, but in a business role, that's yeah. what I really like about doing integrations and product management. And we have 
a lot of in, of, of integrations, like more than than six hundred. So like, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I'm more surprised when I find someone we don't integrate with than we find someone that we do because we have so many. So yeah. Yeah, they're, they're I love working with people too that are like, hey, um, I need your help and your advice on like how to best build this integration. So even though I might you know work with the team to build strategic integrations, I also work with additional partners just to help um, you know build first class integrations on that side too. So it's just a really great opportunity. Awesome. Julia, what do you find interesting about your job here? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, you know, product management is great because you get to work with so many different types of teams and stakeholders. And so I think that's always one of my favorite parts. And then here at PagerDuty, I've also gotten to work on some integrations, which has been really fun as part of the change events and, you know, done some other work as well. And that's exciting. But then also leveraging, I have a lot of background in analytics and data science and being able to work with our data scientists here under AOPS group is, you know, definitely one of the highlights as well. Um, so yeah, I think just the diversity and the range, and of course I work with Vivian as well, you know, it's just all across the board. So it's, um, so those are the great people and the different teams are all part of, I think what I enjoy here. Excellent. Vivian. Yeah. Um, it's interesting being the marketer here because it's like, for as pager duty, our core audience, a lot of times, I mean, I'll ask my husband, Hey, how, how can I reach you? How, what, you know, like, what's the best way? Like when I think about a developer, like they're, they're allergic to marketing in yeah. fact. So I think that it's always like really interesting, especially at PagerD or any other company, right? Like as to put your marketing hat on and be like, okay, what's the best customer experience? And what's, what does the user actually want? Like, how are we delivering value? And so like in my role in product marketing is take kind of taking, like working with the Julia's and the Maya's of the world, like, okay, like, why are we building this and like translating it, anticipating, you know, like certain hesitations or like things that we need to keep in mind and then like building out that full go to market plan with our kind of like marketing partners on the other side to be able to, you know, like, hey, like if people want to self serve, like, let's make that possible. Let's remove friction. And like it, we're we're a big company, we're a small company, it's all relative. And like certainly here it's exciting because there are just so many moving pieces. But like trying to keep that, I think we really do a good job here of like championing the customer and keeping that um, end user in mind as far as like how we bring these things out and make sure that our users are finding, you know, like they're having a good time. And it's like, it's hard to have a product that wakes you up, you know, like yes. I think we, <laughs> it's uh, sometimes there's like a very like visceral reaction to some of the, you know, like being on call, like getting paid and stuff, but like. I really do think that like our product is helping ease. Uh, it's making it less painful than it needs to be, which I think helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It, it is weird, right? Like you, you want, I, I love the old, there was some old marketing that PagerD had done years ago that was like, don't hate the pager, hate the game. And like, I, I love that one. It's like, yeah, this is true. Like, don't hate us. We, we want to be your friends. And, and help you improve your stuff and not just wake you up in the middle of the night. Just to add to that, actually, I think one unique thing that I will say for me, like very background came before this from FinTech and then like a lot of B2B. And, you know, that is one of the really neat things about PagerDuty that I will say is like, you know, as PMs, we work so much with developers in what we do. And it's one of my favorite things. Uh, but then also having that as who we serve and, and being able to kind of flip that, I think is super exciting. And I think our customers, all of them have been like, they're so great to meet with. And it's, it's just such an interesting way to kind of enter and kind of flip that dynamic um, instead of like, it's your colleagues, it's actually some of the customers and, and always like great and excited to share ideas. So. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, one thing that I, I like to do on these panels this week is like have a little bit of brag time. So like, what is something that you are like super proud of, like features you shipped or like uh, a campaign or whatever else, something that you put together, you'd be like, this was amazing. And I, I'm so excited that we we did this kind of thing. Whoever wants to, to start on that one. How about Julia? You haven't started yet. We'll pull you in. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, no. I well, I think one fun thing that I've definitely enjoyed working a couple, couple areas, uh, you know, change events was so much fun to work on, especially like, you know, again, integrations, working with some of, um, you know, looking at CICD tools and, and that being such a part of incident response as well. 
as we all know, like change is one of the most common reasons that, you know, something, something breaks. So that's been exciting to work on. Um, and that's been a lot of fun. And then also just, again, getting to dabble into some of our, you know, AI ML, ML problems that are coming up some really interesting and exciting ideas this year. I'm super excited. So I can't say too much more than that. Um, but other than to say it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a fun year. And so, um, yeah, those are. Yeah, Mandy, you're putting us in a tough spot because the most exciting stuff is usually stuff that you have to keep under your hat for a bit. So. Well, you had stuff that you shipped before that was exciting <laughs> true, right? Like change events, super exciting. I, I, I do dig change events very much. So. Yeah. Okay, Vivian, you're next. What do you? Have? <laughs> um, I will. I mean, I do feel like it's always you want to you know, your, your mind is always thinking and like churning about like, okay, like what's that next big challenge that you're getting ready for. Um, but Mandy, you and I worked last year on the um, state of digital operations report, which we published um, just prior to me moving over to take on the product marketing role. But like, I think that was actually like really exciting for us as page to the business. I think, I mean, we've been in business for over like 10 years and just like have such a rich set of data across our platform to be able to you know, like roll up some of these like metrics or insights on what we're seeing across like all these different types of environments. And like, I think there's a lot of, I mean, there's obviously been lots of discourse, if not too much discourse about like, what's the impact of the pandemic on, you know, yes. like um, incidents and like uh, the lives and the burnout that, you know, our organizations using PagerDuty, our own organization is facing. And so um, being able to like kind of look across the platform data and like kind of synthesize some of those to share with the broader community, I think has been, um, was like probably one of the flag, the, I was a feather in my cap, I'd say, um, at my time at PagerDuty. And I'm really excited to see where it's gonna go um, in future iterations. Cause like exposing that kind of information to try to help normalize a lot of what individual organizations may be experiencing just like helps helps further that conversation for the industry. Yeah, absolutely. I put a link to the, the last uh, version of the report in the chat for the folks joining us on Twitch. So you can check that out if you haven't yet. So definitely take a look there. And the, the next version will be who, who's done the data analysis. It'll be coming out soon-ish. We'll see. Gotta keep it under our hats. Though. I know. I know. We can tease out all of these great things. Uh, Maya, how about you? Yeah, so um, I guess maybe I have two. One, I know everyone gave something more like business focused, but for me, my like proud moment at PagerDuty was, um, so I'm a community responder, a part of the social impact. And when I had the opportunity to like lead a group of Dutonians um, to hand out like a mask and supplies and food and water to homeless people and um, folks that were protesting during the Black Lives Matter movement here in Atlanta. That is to me like my favorite moment that I was felt very blessed to be a part of Pager Duty because I felt very supported during that time. And I know that um, like everyone that was around me in my community also did as well. So um, I think that's like my all time favorite um, story and moment here at Pager Duty. Um, as a product manager, I think my like brag moment would be um, I get to participate in a lot of conferences and PagerDuty is seen as a leader in uh, cloud operations, developer operations. And yes, they see us as that like notification, but then we're starting to get into the cloud world where the last um, conference that I was at, I talked a little bit about how you can use it for business operations or how um, customer support and things like that um, at a Slack conference and um, just being able to like be a spokesperson for PagerDuty um, in different uh, spaces, I think has been just like a really cool opportunity for me. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great to be out and, and like meet people face to face and in person and get sort of that real time feedback for and that's That's what I love about my part of doing that job. Like, yeah, when we're actually out and like, it's, it's one of those great things. Like people are like, yeah, I'm familiar with pager duty. And yeah, like, yeah, you wake us up, but like, it's good. We, we like the product and, and it's good to hear that re encouragement uh, from, from folks in the field. So absolutely agree with you on that one. All right. So let's talk about like, what's a, what's the thing about your job that you feel like folks maybe get wrong or maybe don't fully understand when we do this on the podcast we ask like what's a myth that you want to bust about your your job and the things that you do but is there like 
something that folks maybe assume that you don't actually do or or that is is otherwise sort of like the mystery around your job? I guess I can start. Um, one thing that I feel um, that folks think is that like product just like makes decisions and then people just do things. And that's not the case at all. Um, you have to work with engineering. And and I, I say this in like the nicest way. I feel like my job is herding cats because like one cat is engineering, another is leadership, another are stakeholders, another is customers. And we all have to like get into this like one happy place and make decisions. And we actually probably have no say in these decisions. I have to use like data and um, customers and um, talk with engineering on like what is possible and like bring that story to life for our users. And we're not just like picking things out of a hat or like, just like, this is what we're doing, done, get it started type thing. <laughs> like, like and I, I, I totally understand that. Like it's, it's sometimes uh, challenging for, and I feel this way about like some of the things that I use. It's maybe, you know, you feel like, okay, well, I see what they're doing and what they're improving on. That doesn't, that's not what I want. So like, it's not, not the thing that benefits me the most. Yeah, saying no is so hard. And we say yes a lot, but just because there's so many people that we have to not like, you know, go with it immediately, it, it feels like we say no a lot, so. <laughs> Julia? Yeah, I'll kind of add to that. <laughs> Mine is, it's similar to Maya's. I think it's kind of from the same place, but it's always like when you talk to family and friends, um, you know, because you have manager in your title, you know, people think you manage people, but we don't. We manage through, like Maya saying, through influence. Um, actually, none of the people that we work directly with usually report to us um, as PM. So it's all about, you know, you know, working with customers, working to understand the problem, working through all of your channels, all of your yeah. stakeholders and customers to really find the best solution. Because that's what we are. We're really just a conduit of you know, what do our customers need? What is needed out there? And how are we going to make the product as good as possible? And then working with everyone else as well to make sure that that magic happens. Um, and I think there's a, a bit of magic that you need as a PM sometimes to really get difficult things out there in the market in general. So yeah, we don't manage people directly typically. as well. Coordinator is probably a better word. Like we're a product coordinator because <laughs> we just like have to get all the pieces moving in the right place. I, I like a cat herder. Like I, I, I think that definitely uh, gets the gets the story across too. So that's definitely where PMs and PMMs are just like you know you always there's that movie what's it called the one where it's like synergy. Like I often think of the PM and the PMM partners. It's like in one of those gun duels where you're back to back and you're all like <laughs> okay. you're like trying to cover the 360 feel. And so like cat herding definitely like resonates, but like, I feel like it's not a common misconception about PMM maybe that like there's, there's one way to cut it. And like, the truth is it's just, how do you like make a, how do you pair with that PM and every PM is a little different and like fill in so that we can then like make that whole like 360 experience or like, you know, like some will be tackling, you know, like one person will be tackling certain challenges or like bring certain strengths to the table yeah. and then like, you know, make up for it and to like think through like that full kind of internal and external type of customer experience. So. Yeah. Awesome. So like, do you have like, what are your, do you have methods for like how you balance out everybody's input and like, I know we've got some software and like folks maybe have seen things like user voice or whatever, but like, what, what do you do to like balance out is the, are there compromises to be made on feature sets or, or how does that, how do those negotiations unfold? That's something I've always kind of been curious about, honestly. I mean, is it proprietary information? <laughs> No, I guess I'll start again yeah. um, first this time. If, if Julia or Vivian, you feel free to jump in. Um, I guess um, thinking still almost about the the cat herding. I, I don't even know if we want to coin this term or not, but um, <laughs> uh, it's it's about like building a relationship and like nurturing that relationship and um, using various like ethos, pathos, logos, like you know 
how do you communicate with that person so they can receive what you're saying? And um, I think that is like half the battle. The other half is like, you know, having your proof points and data and being super organized. Everybody has their own organization tool. Mine is a hundred sticky notes that I just have everywhere. Um, I understand my that. Best. <laughs> and I'm um, just remembering everything and keeping communication Communication is probably actually the other half of it. And just over communicating, making sure everyone understands. I find that to be the most helpful with like um, driving a vision or driving um, an initiative. Cool. I can go, go next. Yeah, I mean, I think for like day-to-day -day things, right? Cause we, we do have so many balls we're, we're juggling or cats we're hurting or, or what have you. Um, just constantly reprioritizing. I probably reprioritize constantly in terms of, you know, what is like needed in an hour versus a day versus a week, right? Because sometimes yeah. everything can seem equally urgent. And so I think that just from like a day-to-day -day standpoint is important. Um, from product, you know, kind of second everything that Maya said. And then, you know, as well, really, especially when it comes to like product and, and trying to, to figure out, just always going back to the why and the customer and really pressure testing your own biases. Um, with more customer research again it's like oh no i'm pretty sure it's this but then always revisiting that and always kind of pressure testing i think um, is something you have to do to make sure you don't get caught up in your own um, thought of what something is or, or or maybe trying to to start with with the how versus the the why and the what i think is, is important um so yeah that's that's kind of my my thought process of how i, I typically approach things and then last i guess just also iterate like what mm -hmm. We all have a vision of what we want, but what really is MVP? What is going to get out there and solve the pain point the most urgently? Where Where is that quick win? Um, that's also really valuable because sometimes we want something. We understand it. Finally, it's great. But you, you need to be able to to get out to your customers and, and talk and validate. And, and luckily at PagerDuty, we have such such great customers with our, our developers that definitely when you, you meet with them, they, they let you know and very communicative as well, which is, which is great. I think the only thing I can add there, I think is just double tapping on that start small, learn fast and iterate quickly. And like definitely having those feedback loops, whether it's internal or external stakeholders, it's always, hey, like how do we make this better? And you know, just cause you launch something never means that it's gonna stay the same forever. And so there's always ways that we can make it better. And whether that's an internal process or an external feature, um, it's all about prioritization and like how do we have those like learnings to be able to have make data driven decisions. Yeah, do you, do you think like, and now I'm just kind of like spitballing, but like, we're, a, we're a SaaS product for the for the most part, like the the run deck stuff is, you can still get on prem, but like, whatever, most of the stuff that we have is SaaS. And like, that has a different, does that change the way you think about how the products get get built like the incremental part is just like instead of persuading a customer to install an update and please come and download this patch on on this particular tuesday or, or whatever the case might be that just can be constantly rolling new things into into what they see on the product yeah i'll just jump in real quick i think um for this one, I, I mean, definitely, I think that every aspect of the you know software lifecycle is influenced by the fact that you're SaaS from like how you release, how frequently you release. Um, but also, I think there's like one bit of nuance there too, which is, you know, we talk a lot about like product-led growth, right? So you are releasing things; they're no longer an on-prem environment where you're, you know, you're releasing something every quarter, every month, and there's release notes when you're in the enterprise world where you have that domain knowledge. It's it's how do you when you release something in the product, how do you make it as intuitive as possible? How do you lead a customer through that experience and through that journey um, when, you, when you have a lot of users and, and you have something you're releasing frequently? So I think that product-led growth, um, PLG is an important aspect of, of the SaaS environment. Awesome. All right, so Vivian had some suggested questions and one of them actually is kind of uh, uh, kind of amusing that we can, we can uh, uh, head on with the so one of the things that she was like is this um if you weren't a product manager or product marketing manager what other kind of job would you want to have 
And Vivian, this was your question. So I want, <laughs> I want you to answer this first. It's like, uh, yeah, like what other kinds of things inspire you? Like what what other, if, it, if not necessarily another job, but like what else is out there that you find interesting or inspiring or that you look to for, for innovative ideas? Yeah. Um, well, whenever I like think of these types of questions, it always brings me back to, uh, I think I was a freshman in college and I think it was called what colors my parachute. Like there was oh, all yeah. this, like, what do you want to do? Like, what, are, what are you best suited to do? So then the co college like career counseling center was like, Oh, like fill out this survey and we'll give you a recommendation. And then, so I filled this out and then it said, your ideal career is to be a florist. <laughs> and I was wow. like, what? I do not have a green thumb, first of all. But like, if I really had to like bring, you know, like tease it back, like maybe it's like, because I like, like taking a step back, you know, like from in, my mom does EK dabbles in EK Bonners. And you know, like, you got to think about like, what is this? You know, like, what is this bouquet for? Like, what is the purpose? Like, what, how do we like think carefully about like, how to do this and like what what will the end you know like result or impact what's the feeling that this like um floral design might impart <laughs> and if i think about it like that i'm like oh, like i'm kind of like where i would this you know like a pmm like has to think about all these different things and like you know like yeah. craft like a message or like an experience or communication that like is very tailored for a certain persona or experience um but really, when I was asking the question, I was thinking something more off the wall. And like, if I wasn't doing this, where I'd be applying my skills. And I think I might be interested in like working on something that's related to climate change. Oh, okay. um, it's just a big, I mean, it's a pressing priority. So um, maybe next gig, we'll see. <laughs> climate change organizations need product marketing too. Yeah, coordinators. <laughs> Maya, how about you? Yeah, so I was like, over my life, I've wanted to be lots of different things. When I was five, I wanted to be like a professional whistler. I saw that on, yes, I saw it on like the um, uh, Mr. Rogers and I was like, done. I know what I'm gonna be, mom. She was like, hold on. And then, you know, in college, you know, I was like gonna be a dentist. And I went and worked at a dentist in dentist and orthodontic place for like multiple summers. And I still ended up in tech. And I feel like each time I went down like a little path, um, I, I did one of those surveys and they told me to be a social worker. So I started looking in that and it got me really depressed. And I went into, and somehow I ended up in tech in each one of those. So I do think I would stay in the tech world. Um, I think that I would try to do more pro bono and like, do more social impact and be nonprofit with tech though. If I was to like not, and I, I obviously could do that with product management, but I think having my own nonprofit would be like my like other, like my spirit animal or something. I don't know. That'd be incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Julia? Yeah. Um... Well, I, yeah, I started out with math as my degree, and I always thought I was going to go on to be like continue on through graduate school with that or go to do law. Um, and then I've ended up in tech. So it's, it's interesting, um, but I love it. And it's, it's great. But, you know, longer term, I, or if I could do anything, um, you know, a few areas, I definitely would second like the not for, for profit area um, would certainly be interesting. And I also feel like in terms of, you know, I have a lot of family that are educators and I taught at one point and I used to tutor. Um, I also feel like all of the skills that we've learned in this sector are so applicable to so, so many and into even in, in the nonprofit industry. And especially I think about like teaching our youth some of the skills that, that we've been so fortunate to have learned um, and being able to kind of teach that. So that's definitely like one thing I want to make sure I do eventually is pass on some of the knowledge that I've learned. Um, and then also passionate about things like climate change. It's, it's certainly concerning. Um, I, I do actually, Vivian, by the way, when you said florist, I can that actually make complete sense when you said that. Um, I, I could actually see that. I, and I, I, I do garden and things like that. So, so yeah, I would love to, to go out there and, and help something with, with climate change and so something with sustainability and where technology 
meets that, which, you know, there's so much already going on in this space as well, right? With, with yeah. ways to help. But yeah, I think all of that sounds are, are different areas. And, and then just going to school, I hope I can be a forever student, you know, I hope I can go back to college and then, you know, continue on uh, learning. What would you go back for? Time. I, well, if, if this is an imaginary world, many whatever, things, yeah, I would keep, keep going with math. I would probably go do law as well, probably study everything. But, uh, but uh, you know, one thing at a time. Yeah, excellent. There, there is no limit, right? Absolutely. We can just, you know, go wherever. So, um, what kinds of things do you most look forward to in your in your jobs? Like. I know there's a lot of different tasks and a lot of different things that, that you get to do. We talked about, you know, working with other teams and all that great stuff, learning from our users. What other uh, things that are, do you most look forward to when you're looking at your calendar for the week and say, oh, I can't wait for, for that particular thing to come up. Is there anything? I look forward to these. I'm on here a couple times a week. So. I guess I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Vivian. Oh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I feel like it's something new every day. I'm not working on the same thing. And I think that is what makes uh, my job exciting. And I think if I was doing the same thing every day, it would be boring. So um, I, I, I look forward to that and I look forward to the people I work with. And um, yeah, uh, the community here at PagerDuty is great. So I, I look forward to those things. Vivian? Sure. Um, I try to pepper in like a lot of, I know some people hate meetings, but I actually love meetings. I love having like one-on-ones or like small group things. And I'm like, whether you're talking about work or not, um, just having that connection. And where I'm actually on a remote first team, Andy, you and I know, yeah. like, you know, I mean, with everyone in pandemic, of course, but so it is a, uh, it's just having that time to like really get to know people and then like move towards that common goal. It sounds really cheesy, but it's true, right? Like every time I meet with Julie on a one-on-one, -on -one, like we can talk about our birds and our cats. And then we talk about how to move the ball forward on like any number of projects that we're working on. And um, that like fostering that like partnership. Is, yeah, especially um, now because like, we, 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 we both started here after the pandemic started, yeah. right? So like I... And I live on the East Coast, so I've not met anyone on our team in person yet. So, um, yeah, that's uh, it's nice to have little casual chats with folks uh, when you can. So. Julia, anything come to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, I would second what Maya said. Definitely when you're working on some exciting projects and they're hitting key milestones, that's always exciting. And those meetings are exciting. Um, and then, you know, I think of, like we spend so much time at work, the people are, you know, really important. So yeah. always kind of, you know, also what piggybacking off what Vivian said is, you know, working with all the great people we get to work with and, and having a mixture of 90% work, 95% work, and then, you know, getting to work with those people and get to know them slowly over time is, is also fun. Awesome. All right. So I've, I've one final question. Um, and so instead of wrapping up with like a, what's advice you would give to your younger self? Uh, Cause our younger selves lived in a different world for sure. Right. Like what's something that um, you know, either like a, a skill that you recommend folks learning if they'd like to get into product management or product marketing or something that you hope to work on in the future, a skill that you want to get better at, in in the next couple of years if there's anything out there that you're just like yeah it, maybe not necessarily going back to grad school for math but like other other interesting things that are out there that that you want to learn vivian i all right if i were talking with i mean okay i know you said you're not asking me what i would have told my younger self but i tell like my like people i mentor and like cousins who are in college and stuff like it's in, I feel like in PMM and then like increasingly, like I can just see that like having technical skills and like being able to be comfortable with data is something that's really important. And so like wherever and however you can get more practice with that or just more familiar talking about 
hot stuff, like getting into whatever, I would anticipate whatever field, like you'll need to invest in some of that. So taking the time to really do it. And then like, I do think that hopefully like some organizations will like make room for people to then like upskill um, or up level their skills there to be able to, you know, really succeed, whether it's at this company or the next, like that's, there's no turning back from that. So that's kind of like one that I, a core skill set that I see as being important for a long time. Yeah, awesome. Maya, anything for you? Yeah, so uh, Vivian definitely took mine, but I would say something I'm learning right now is about um, being able, and I, I think this is something that maybe, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna speak my truth and this is literally what I'm, I'm what we're here for to learn yep. is, um, I'm reading this book called Radical Candor and being able to just communicate very directly without kind of, and I think I, as a female, can be a little wishy-washy sometimes, please, thank you, oh, can you? And like being able to just be my honest self and be um, direct without coming off as an explicitive um, is something that I am, you know, working at, at that, that muscle, that communication muscle of, um, ensuring things are like clearly said, especially during difficult times. I just saw a post from someone and came across my Twitter feed this week about an actual like plugin for Gmail that you can get that will help with like oh, wow. calling out that language. Cause like, instead of saying, I think, or maybe, or yeah. whatever, like giving you a bit of a hint that, yeah. Cause I, yeah, I always struggle with those. And I, please send that to me. Please. I'll see if I can find it and we'll send yeah. it out. But definitely, because it was super interesting to, to to think about it from that perspective. I don't send yeah. a lot of emails, but like, yeah, definitely, definitely comes up for that stuff. Julia? Yeah, um, definitely we'll second what Vivian said about, because um, you do get asked as a PM, what, what advice do you have? And I started out with a lot of background in analytics and, you know, doing, starting out in services and implementation. I think that was such a great foundation for kind of moving forward into, into product. Um, and also sometimes developers that want to become PMs and, and sometimes they feel like their technical background, they understand that it's valuable. I just don't think they understand how valuable, right? And so I think really leaning into that is, is certainly, and then I think the second half to that is being very agile and flexible mm -hmm. because as PMs, you're always learning new technology, new product, new features, you're, you're, you have to move quickly. Um, and be able to adapt quickly. And so that can be a change for, for some folks as well. And so I think agility and really thinking, um, being flexible in terms of always wanting to picking up new skills and being open to the next project or product that you're working on is, is super valuable and necessary in this career. Change is the only constant. Change is the only Change constant. Keeps changing, absolutely. All right. So as a, a parting uh, wish for everyone, do you have things that you can tease that you have coming up? Like things that people should be looking out for from pager duty that you're looking forward to, to kicking out that, that you can actually tell us about. So I'm going to steal Vivian's because I'm going to say, keep an eye out for our uh, upcoming CFP opening for our summit. So that will be announced uh, next week. And Vivian and I are, are track chairs for, for different tracks on that. So I'm just gonna steal that one from from you. So you have to, you know, give us a different one. But yeah, Maya, you have anything cool coming out that folks should be looking out for? Yeah. So um, we have a slew of uh, you know chat integrations, and we're working on a new one with a, a partner that's developing it, and I'm really excited about that one. So um, we currently have Slack and Microsoft Teams, but we don't have this one. So that's as much as I can say. <laughs> We do Ooh. have Zoom too, so you know, there's so, only so many. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm like, we're not doing like ICQ or anything, like, <laughs> no classic. So, yeah. so you Julia? know, I'm excited to launch. That, that sounds one. great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, plus one to Summit. Uh, also, look out for that. We're doing some exciting things. Uh, we'll be, you know, there's gonna be webinars. Uh, noise reduction is one area I'll be focusing on. So. You know, that's a lot of our features like intelligent alert grouping. We just had a recent you know, the, um, auto pause incident uh, notification. So really uh, great features, a uh, feature as well for helping reduce noise. So definitely look out for, for all of that and um, under our AI ops group. Yeah. 
Andy, okay. since you stole mine, um, <laughs> uh, there, another interesting, I guess, like hot off the press, right? Like with the acquisition that was just announced. Yeah. Um, I think like it's going to be really, it's going to be an interesting time to be watching the space and see what happens with that. And so, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, definitely. Sounds, uh, if there's, yeah, there's just so much going on. And for folks out there who have joined us today, thank you. Uh, if you, if any of this sounds interesting, right, the good thing is that Peter Judy is hiring. So if you would like to know more, you can check out our careers page at pagerduty.com slash careers. We do have openings on these teams right now for, for various positions. So like, you know, throw your hat in there and, you know, give it a shot. Cause like, <clears throat> as we've said, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. And, and like Maya mentioned, like we've got a lot of social impact projects and a lot of really great stuff for folks who are, you know, socially minded for, you know, involved in their communities. And, um, and Vivian, you have openings directly on your team, right? So like, there's uh, definitely opportunities here for folks to join us and join these amazing ladies at uh, PagerDuty. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. This has been great. Uh, super interesting to hear from from all of our folks about what's coming up and uh, and what you're doing. And anytime you want to come back on the stream, let, let us know. We're, we're happy to show off all of the product features and, and talk to folks um, about what's coming up and, and what you've got going on. So it's been great. No, thank you. Andy. Yep. All right, everybody. Take care. Uh, mm -hmm. Have a great day. We will wish you an uneventful weekend and uh, we'll see you next Thanks for watching. Make sure you never miss a stream. Follow us at PD Community and PagerDuty on Twitch.tv. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you'd like to be on our stream, email us at community-team at pagerduty.com so we can feature the cool things you're doing. And don't forget, check out all of our global events on our calendar at pagerduty.com events.